yeah, the combi is, uh, the attraction of combi was really, uh, I guess everybody's got a bit of a romantic uh, attachment to combi as they were growing up, certainly in my, uh, my generation. And uh, so the classic combis uh, are a strong memory. Uh, plus, you know, on the same time, I've always fancied doing some uh, mechanical work and, and the flat four that uh, the combi comes with, the air-cooled, is uh, quite a simple engine to work with and uh, so that was an attraction and then of course the, you know, the whole thing around uh, uh, taking the kids uh, just around. I've all, I grew up as a, you know, in, uh, in a rural area enjoying uh, playing up the fields and stuff and that's a, a sort of a very fond memory of mine so to have the kids in the city uh, have uh, be exposed uh, in a balanced way to, to those sorts of rural uh, settings uh, in a very natural uh, environment, live it, you know, sort of uh, playing outside and real fires and beaches and things is uh, is a real uh, great thing. And, and so, yeah, of late um, we've been doing a lot of that. I've probably done since uh, finishing the renovation. I've done must be best part of five, six thousand miles uh, around Malaysia already, uh, up to Thailand and so forth. So, combination of VW meets and uh, and you know just taking the kids uh, to places while camping and things like that. So I think uh, I probably paid over the odds for it, but I did fall in love with it, and uh, I guess that's rule number one uh, for bad negotiation. But still, anyway, uh, I, I bought it off a gentleman up in Kedah in Alastar um, and I flew up there which is uh, I guess a, a mistake in the first place with the intention of driving it back if I did the deal um, but I, I had a look at the, the bus and it was in very sound order and so the combi adventure begins I paid uh, 63 for it all up um, and uh, that was I think probably a little little over the odds maybe 8k over but okay you know sometimes you've got a Look at the bigger picture. Uh, this was mechanically sound. It was uh, rust-wise. There wasn't a lot of rust. The guy had taken care of it. Used it in a similar fashion with his family when they were younger, and it hadn't been used very much for the last 10 years. But he kept it in good working order and gone to a few uh, events and things. So that was, uh, to me, was uh, it was in good shape. So the total bill in the end. Uh, it's a good job uh, my wife is not here listening to this now. <laughs> the total 63. Uh, was the purchase price 38 or 39 I think I've spent on it with parts, labor, everything. But in that there's a lot of carpentry work and things that I did myself that I haven't sort of factored into the cost. Every VW door has a unique character. <laughs> the interior is, as you see, as I mentioned before, is very simple. Um, all the, the frame and the wood paneling, this is uh, solid oak wood paneling. The seats are all leather. I uh, bit the bullet and spent uh, the money on the leather. It was uh, maybe a few thousand ringgit extra on what it would have normally been, but it was certainly worth it because when you're sleeping on it, it's a lot more comfortable. You don't get that sweatiness of the of PVC. The board, it's just a simple ply board. As you can see, it's got lugs on it. So that's it. This is like a giant jigsaw puzzle. So basically there's a lot of Velcro um, these are the two pieces that we use now to, so you can see that this fits. So there's lugs under the seat that basically take this and then there's a lift up here with all the storage. That sits down on there, that sits in there. So that's the, that's the bed and that's the firm base. Then there's a bit of a jigsaw and that then turns into the bed. And you can see that this, uh, this takes my weight. And what I typically do is move the seat back there to the side because that gives me the extra length for me to sleep. And then this one tends to, we just leave that one in the front cab. So you can see that, what was it? Maybe two minutes. It's not quite a rock and roll bed, but it's a manumatic rock and roll. And then you put a sheet over this and it's uh, pillows and it looks like a double bed. The hardest thing was thinking about how to practically use the thing. I mean, obviously the, the, the reasoning behind how I wanted to use it was very clear. I wanted to, to go uh, with the kids, sleep in the bus um, and have it cool enough in Malaysia in the evening. So things like fans were a, a sort of a minimum, potentially aircon. 
So the design of the bus is all around simplicity and uh, originally I was going to put in a sink and a, you know the classic sort of look with the sink and the, and, the, and the stove and stuff. And that's typically in the cooler climes like UK and Europe and you know, Australia. Typically people would do that, but I, with a bit of soul searching on how I would use it, I was thinking, well, Malaysia weather, I mean, it, it's one hour, the rain is gone and you can cook outside, it's lovely and warm. So uh, that sort of drove me towards keeping it a lot simpler inside and doing everything else outside. So, so the, 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 the sink and the, the stove were, were banished to, the, to, to below the awning and, uh, and that's worked really well up till now, you know, it's, uh, it's been the right decision, I think. So you'll see that, you know, the, 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 the layout of the thing is very straightforward and, and simple and it, uh, it, it certainly does the job for us. Basically, I wanted to have a separate uh, leisure battery. Uh, there's a, I have a relay uh, splitter that basically charges from uh, a slightly larger alternator, 75 amp uh, alternator, and that splits basically uh, cascades from the main battery and then any excess goes to the, to, to the, uh, the leisure battery. And I looked uh, up a, a battery uh, vendor here in Malaysia that imports, and uh, that battery was the biggest battery I could find that would fit in the space the opposite side to the, the, the run battery. So it's 134 amp hour, which is almost double what a normal car battery is. Um, and it's a gel type uh, deep cycle uh, technology. So it's ideal for very low draw, long low draw, but you can draw it down to 80% uh, rather than 20% on a normal battery. So that's the, the leisure battery that runs the lights, the fans inside, there's two fans. Um, for us to stay cool at, uh, at, at, uh, at, uh, in, the, in the night. And uh, yeah, cost-wise, uh, all of that, uh, the battery I think was seven, eight hundred uh, ringgit. And uh, the fans are, you know, typical sort of internet, you know, $20 sort of fans really. So this is aftermarket uh, stuff uh, in the UK. And it's just basically consists of a base. You screw to the, to the floor. Then there's this, which sort of twists in. And this you can you can move around as well. So you know if you want to sit that side, you want to get past. Most of the time, I must admit, if I'm on a long run, I will have the quarter window open, and I prefer the fresh breeze coming in. And that's you know we rarely run the aircon on a, when we're moving at that speed. But here in KL, you know often uh, there'll be uh, some sort of jam somewhere, and we will use that. Uh, you know when when it's particularly warm uh, in the in the cab. So uh, the aircon uh, had that done uh, over in SS2, and they did a great job. It's a, a mixture of components that were already there. There was an aircon system that didn't work in this in, in there and was old. And I so I, I reused the compressor and uh, redid all the lines and the the fan and stuff like that. But so the aircon can only run when the engine runs. Um, and uh, as I say, in, when we're sleeping in the night, then we just use the fans. Renovating one of these things is so much fun. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, uh, technicians around that actually are capable of doing it. A lot of people have worries about parts. You can still, even though they're becoming more rare, parts are available. And, uh, and, and now there's an aftermarket that's sort of burgeoning because there's so many of these things still around. So, so, you know, it's, it's a good investment, it's a great journey in renovating the thing and, and it's a fantastic journey every time you take it out of the, out of the gate. You know, so. mm -hmm.